All right, welcome back to NetDevOps Studios. Once again, I'm Hank Preston, a developer evangelist with Cisco DevNet, focused on all things network programmability and NetDevOps. And today we are back in our NSO, Cisco Network Service Orchestrator Series, and I'm joined once again with Kevin Corbin. In our first video, we talked about how NSO provides us a single CLI and API for your entire network, no matter whether that network is made up of old or new, Cisco, third party, does not matter, NSO's got your back with a single API and CLI. In today's video, we're gonna put that API to, the, to work by combining NSO with other uh, NetDevOps tools like Ansible in today's example as we go through. So Kevin, remind folks who you are and what you do here at Cisco. Yeah, Hank, so I'm a DevOps TSA, which means that I cover the entire portfolio end to end with a focus on APIs, programmability, and automation. A man after my own heart. So let's dive right into it. What are you going to show me today? Well, Hank, like you, I have a lot of conversations with customers about existing tools like Ansible and their desire to get to something representing infrastructure as code. But one of the questions that comes up pretty early in the conversation is, you know, it's great that I'm using Ansible to automate all of these tasks, but the process of creating the Ansible playbook based on my existing network is still a very manually intensive job. It would be really nice if there was some way that we could automatically generate an Ansible playbook based on the state of the network configuration as it exists today. So we endeavored to create a, kind of a proof of concept of what that might look like, and that's what we're gonna show here today. Yeah, you are so spot on with what we hear. Every time we do these, these lessons or workshops with with network engineers, that's the question that comes up is, this is awesome, how do I get started with my current config? And this is great that we've got an opportunity to show what's possible, so let's get started. Right, so the you know one of the other questions that comes up very early on is, well, that's great, but how do I test my scripts or my playbooks or whatever it is that I'm getting ready to run? And one of the things that's nice about NSO is a component called NetSim. And what NetSim allows me to do is create a, uh, a management plane for the devices that I want to interact with. Now, these aren't real devices. They don't have control planes or data planes, but they'll give me a good indication of how my playbook is going to behave with the real device, and I can move into test and validation using uh, other tools in, in a later phase. Um, so what I'm showing right now is actually creating a very simple network of three iOS routers. Uh, I, I'm also launching an instance of NSO on my laptop as well, um, which is through this NCS setup command that you see at the top of my screen here. And, and one of the nice things about having NetSim built into NSO is that it can detect when I have those NetSims running and it will automatically import them into the inventory uh, of NSO so it's one less manual thing that I have to, to do. That's all cool. Let, let me break down a little bit of what you went through. So if you'll allow me to play the devil's advocate for a little bit, you, you mentioned that NetSim doesn't provide anything but a management plane. What real value do I have as a Net DevOps engineer if I, I can't actually establish routing adjacencies and make sure my config is allowing traffic to pass? Is, is a management plane any good for me? Yeah, it is, and, and you raise good questions, and those things are very important, but in this initial dev phase, it's also very important to not, you know, if, if our test network is a, a real network that is, uh, you know, being used by multiple, com multiple users, or maybe it's, a, you know, a viral resource that's still somewhat scarce, it's still good to have an initial kind of checkpoint to say, is the configuration as it's going to get put into the management plane, is that valid and is my Ansible playbook correct such that I can be assured by the time I get you know my turn on the, the test network, whatever that may be, I'm pretty confident that the test is gonna actually run. And then I can use that time to validate those things that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And, and that's absolutely true. And that's an important part piece to keep in mind as you're building up your own Net DevOps toolbox and pipelines is that each step along the way from development until you get to production is an opportunity to continue to advance your sophistication of what you're testing through. In these initial dev phases, maybe all you care about is, is my API working? Am I correctly making that netconf or rest call? And that's where something like NetSim and the ability to bring up a large, complex management plane right on your laptop so every NetDevOps developer can have their own is hugely valuable. 
And then you can progress into those more sophisticated data plane and entire networks or simulated networks with a tool like CML or Viral from Cisco. All right, so we've got our, our network simulation is up and running. Um, can we get connected to it? It's a management plane, so can we SSH or Telnet into them? Yeah, we can SSH into the devices here using the NCS NetSim command. You can see I've connected to router zero and I can issue a show running config as I would uh, on any real device and, and see my interfaces and, and that sort of thing. Um, you notice I've got some loopbacks and some Ethernet interfaces defined here. Awesome. But you said you started up an NSO instance along with your development network. Uh, NSO gives us APIs to access that same configuration, correct? That, that's correct, yes. Um, and so what I'm showing here is a you know, API representation of what that configuration might look like on a, a, a real device uh, through NSO and through its API. Excellent. Now that's what we're going to take advantage of is that API when we start to combine this together with Ansible. And, and I'm sure many of you watching this video are experimenting with Ansible and other configuration management tools, but that's the step we get stuck on. So how can we use this API to help us speed along our, our net DevOps infrastructure as code strategies, Kevin? Yeah, so that's where the proof of concept came into play. And what we said is, well, gee, if, if we've got this NSO instance that now has a configuration representation of all of our devices, and we can get that data out as JSON, then it would be fairly easy for us to convert that JSON data into the YAML format in which Ansible likes for things like host variables and whatnot. So uh, a very, very simple Python script then will actually create those host variables for me. So we're gonna go ahead and execute our generate Ansible script. And you can see it's gonna pull all of the configuration from those NetSim devices and go ahead and create host variables for me. We can take a peek at those host variables in our text editor here and look at our router zero configuration and you can see uh, here's a, you know one of the loopbacks that we saw in the CLI as well as the API. Excellent, excellent. And that's the magic that we're talking about here. Kevin was mentioning at the beginning that folks are always looking for a way to automatically create their Ansible playbooks and variable files. And that's what this is showing in this proof of concept code that's here. In addition to that host vars is a playbook that we can actually run to push out this config, isn't there? Yeah, so the, the playbook itself becomes pretty simple because we have a YAML representation of the configuration as NSO sees it. We can simply play those host variables through the Ansible playbook and through that API to deploy that configuration. And in this state, you know, because we generated those config files off of the running configuration, you can see that when I execute the playbook, there's no changes that are made. That gives me a quick validation that says, yep, my playbook is a one for one between what is deployed in the, uh, in the network devices themselves. Mm. Now, one thing I do notice that's different from when I'm normally using Ansible to configure my network is I usually have lots of tasks and lots of plays uh, that do the interface configuration and the routing configuration. Your playbook looks quite small and, and it ran fairly quick. W what are you using to make that work like that? Yeah, so the fact that NSO is a single API for our entire network simplifies my Ansible playbooks greatly. I no longer have to worry about platform-specific modules for iOS or NXOS or iOS XR. I'm simply using a single module that became available in Ansible 2.5, which is the NSO config module. And what the NSO config module does is it's an Ansible client for that NSO API. So I'm using the single API to push the entire device configuration into NSO and letting it handle all of the complexities of actually connecting to all of those devices in the back end and taking advantage of the multi-threaded nature of, it, of NSO rather than Ansible iterating through all of my devices. Well, that's fantastic. Well, let's make a network configuration change. Shall we, uh, we, we make some, some updates to one of these routers? Sure. So since we're on router zero here, let's go ahead and perform what is the equivalent of the hello world of network programmability, which is adding a loopback here. So I'm gonna add a new loopback. We're gonna call this loopback, loopback number one. And I'm gonna give it some IP address information and change my subnet mask. Those are always important. 
and I'm going to save the configuration here. So now we have in our loopback list, we have two loopbacks, loopback zero and loopback one. And I can take that host variables and replay it right back through the same Ansible playbook now. And this time around, NSO should detect that there's a change required on router zero and actually push that configuration change out to it. That's fantastic. Well, let's, let's go full circle. Can we, we SSH back into router zero and make sure it actually created it? Sure. So we can use the NCS NetSim one again to issue a command line for router zero. And when we connect in, we do our show running configuration. And you can see not only do we have the loopback zero from the previous time we were in here, but we also have our new loopback one uh, with the appropriate IP address information configured. Awesome. That's, that's magic there, Kevin. I love to see that. And, and remember what the focus here was not that we were using Ansible to configure the network folks, but that we were able to combine Ansible with NSO to automatically create an entire playbook along with the variable files to do our full configuration across our existing network config. We didn't have to create all of that from scratch and by hand. By bringing these tools together, we got the best of both worlds as it went in. And that's what we're after is we're building our, our final tool chains and tool bags and pipelines in our net devops world so once again kevin man thank you so much for joining me on this net devops studios video and if i can put you on the spot for a minute uh would you be happy to come back again and continue to share some of the great work that you're doing with the viewers yeah anytime hank <laughs> excellent man thanks again all right well i hope you enjoyed this video as much as we enjoy putting it out for you we will see you in the next one talk to you soon Thank you.